Hey, this is Gabe Taviano. I live in uh, Siem Reap, Cambodia. I'm a photographer. I shoot with the full frame um, Sony uh, A7R2 uh, camera. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys uh, today about something that I think is more important than the camera that, that you carry is um, the style of art that you create. And Skylum Photography is a company that um, I'm a big fan of. Uh, they produce uh, Luminar, which is a, a really uh, great uh, photo editing um, piece of software and my favorite piece of software is probably their um, Aurora HDR uh, 2019 so I'll share some of that in a, view, a video in the future um, but today what I want to do is I want to jump into my portfolio and I've got a, a photo from uh, near Las Vegas there's a, a park called uh, Valley of Fire and I've got a photo of what's called uh, the fire wave and um, this morning that photo sits in my portfolio, but um, now that I have Luminar and I've played with it, um, Skylum has given me this beta copy, um, but now um, I've got my hands on uh, like a 99% uh, like final version. Um, so it's been a good uh, few weeks to uh, use the software, test it, and now um, share what I think about it with you guys and um, looking at this photo today. Um, but yeah, it releases November 18th. Um, you can pre-order it now. Um, and I'll have links to Aurora, Luminar, and all that stuff. All my links um, to Facebook and everything in the description of the video. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in uh, to my portfolio and look at the photo that I have currently in my portfolio. And then um, I'll show you how quickly and easily Luminar uh, can take something that I thought was worth selling uh, this morning and make it even better. Okay, and uh, while we go through the tutorial, if you guys have any questions, um, you can contact me. I'm going to give you my uh, information. This is Gabe Taviano Photography on uh, Facebook. And then I've got Instagram, uh, Gabe Taviano, uh, with a lot of photos on that account. Um, and then you can also just comment you know, in the YouTube video and leave me any questions you have there about the software. Um, this is a photo book on darksunsets.com. I've just released that. You can hop over there and take a look at that. But I'm here uh, today to talk about Skylum. Um, first thing you should do is is uh, go ahead and follow Skylum Software on Facebook um, so you can see what they're doing in this industry with uh, photography software and how far things are going. Um, another group you want to join is uh, a group of photographers. Um, we communicate uh, in a Skylum Photography uh, group on Facebook, and that's been really helpful for me um, to see what other people are doing and to communicate with other photographers. And I even have met some other Skyland photographers, uh, like uh, I met Wynn and uh, Chris Magsino uh, in uh, the Manila, Philippines uh, just this month. Um, and here is uh, the Luminar 4 um, that I'll be talking about today, releases on November 18th. Um, but you can pre-order it today um, at a special discount price, and I'll put that uh, in the description. Uh, so you guys can click that. So let's look at um, this picture. This is my portfolio, uh, GabeTaviano.ShootProof.com. And here, if you go into my portfolio, there are like, I think, 34 uh, photos here or so. Um, so I live in Cambodia. You can see a lot of Angkor Wat pictures, temple pictures. But here are some pictures from the States um, near Las Vegas. Uh, there is a park that I enjoyed capturing called the Valley of Fire. And this photo right here is what I'll be talking about today. Um, it's a photo that sits in my portfolio right now. It's a pretty nice photo. I like it. The composition is good. The color is okay. Um, but now that I have Luminar, I want to show you um, just how quickly and easily you can take something that, like this photo for me is, is a portfolio photo, but that doesn't mean it, it can, cannot be made better. You can see the sky is just straight blue, um, not too interesting. Um, my focus on this photo is um, obviously the lines leading up um, from the bottom left corner of the of the frame into the center um, to this area right here. Um, that is the focus. And um, I'll show you the raw photo here in just a second. Um, but before we look at the <laughs> raw photo and how how lame it is, um, I want you to see here. These are the areas that I'm going to actually be editing today, um, and we're going to see what Luminar can do with this. But I saw these four spots right up here through the, through the frame. Um, there's uh, this uh, 
objects sticking up off of the rocks here. There's some cuts in the rock here that kind of takes away from the smoothness of this area that I think is nice. And then there's this hole right here and a little cut um, in the rock down there. And then the sky is just straight blue. It's not too interesting, but Luminar makes that uh, very easy to fix. So let's close that and let's jump into uh, Lightroom. Um, I use right now, I've used it for a few years as my um, library and some basic editing, but I don't use it um, for the serious editing. I do use Skylum for that. Um, for almost all of my photos are, are produced uh, with Luminar and Aurora HDR 2019. But this is the um, this is the raw, so you can see that uh, I didn't even uh, compose the photo correctly. Um, but using a full frame camera, then I'm able to crop that down. Um, but this is the raw photo. The light is um, is not very good. Um, but thankfully, I didn't you know I didn't capture a JPEG, and that's why uh, shooting raw is um, allow it allows me to take a photo like that and turn it into something like this, just in Lightroom with a quick crop or whatever. But um, let's look at, I want to take this um, and show you what, I, what I'm doing with it in Luminar 4 and putting it in my portfolio. Uh, so let's jump into Luminar 4 here. Um, so I've got uh, down here, let me change this um, to the Essentials Looks down here, but we'll talk about this um, interface and this is something that I really uh, like. Um, and I think it's what sets Luminar ahead of all the other pieces of software and all the other competitors is the user interface. Um, in the past, my, my degree in, um, and my studying was done in graphic design. I've done a lot of user interface design. I've done website design. I've done e-learning um, and uh, like software design with e-learning and courseware design with e-learning. Um, and so I have a decent background and a lot of experience with uh, design, so I really uh, appreciate the simplicity of uh, this software. It's not very difficult to understand. And so for anybody out there that, you know, maybe you even consider yourself an amateur photographer, if you look at this interface um, over here, these icons are where you want to really focus. Um, at first you have it open and you have Essentials, Creative, Portrait, which I'll talk about in another tutorial uh, this week, and then Pro, and then Deprecated. Today I'm going to be showing you um, how we're going to fix those five things in the photo, the four things across here that were kind of eyesores, and then the sky. Um, but you can all, um, if you're familiar with editing software, a lot of editing software includes layers, and that's what um, we'll be using today is, um, is the layer option up here, then Clone and Stamp and Erase and cropping uh, all the canvas work is done under the canvas icon right there. Very easy to use. Um, so uh, before we begin, you can look at the bottom. I could easily click down here and just click one of these looks um, and instantly, um, you know, add a filter um, to the photo. It's not really a filter, I guess. It's adjustments that are made um, to these tools over here um, quickly without you having to go in. Um, and adjust those. Let's undo that um, and let's jump in to, um, at first I want to just show you those four things I want to replace right here and I'll do that real quick with the clone and stamp. Okay, um, so it's open and what uh, Luminar asks you to do is it makes it pretty obvious in the center of the screen. Click to set your source. Um, so you just click one time and then it, it, it grabs the source of the photo. Um, so I just grab that down there. I'm going to shrink it with my left bracket, and I'm going to I grab this is the source, and now I just want to paint right here um, over this line and see what that does. Look at that, it's gone. And then if I want to select another source and paint something else, I just hold Alt, select the source, you know, right here, and paint over that. Here's this line right here. Um, that's okay. I want to leave that. I don't like this hole. I think it takes away from the white line right here. So I could just grab Alt and then paint over that right there. This area right here, I think this big line is what is um, kind of uh, taking away from the photo. Um, and then the object up there, uh, if I wanted to, I can just click on the edge right there and paint um, 
we do that a little bit better. And paint right there. There we go. Now you can't see that. So I think this picture, uh, there's one more, sorry, just saw that. And this is one thing I think, you know, as a photographer, um, you want to look at your photo and um, decide how do you want it to display um, to the viewer. So for me, I actually do, I take the time to look through the photo and see, okay, what do I not like? And what do I need to remove? What do I need to add? And so a lot of times, um, stuff like this, you know, now I'm looking here, I maybe want to remove that. So what makes it, you know, more, more pleasing to look at? Um, uh, what, you know, is distracting? And so there, I, I can... Uh, Remove those four or five things quickly with the clone and stamp inside of Luminar and then just click done. Okay, so now I want to get into two areas of the photo and then I, I'll, um, I'll be finished. And I'll just show you how quickly this is. The sky. Let's go ahead and work on the sky. Um, we can jump over to the creative section over here and click on AI sky replacement. And Luminar gives you 24 or so uh, skies that are images. Um, and then you can load your own custom sky down here, which um, is what I'm going to be uh, providing um, a lot of skies uh, that you guys can use in the future. I'm uh, collecting quite a few of those. Um, so I'll make those available soon. But I'll click Blue Sky, Blue sky 2. And there you see, I didn't have to do any masking at all. I didn't have to cut um, the ridge of the mountain. Um, I didn't do, have to do any selection. Um, and I can easily work with this sky photo now. Um, and the hor horizon position is, I think, the most important thing here because you can move it down and move it up. And the more I move it up, now you can see there goes the horizon, the bottom edge of that sky photo. So you want to bring that down and line it up to where you think it looks best, but you at least want it to, to bleed right behind you know, your object, which is the mountains here. So I'll bring it down. I kind of think, um, you know, maybe, you know, that kind of looks, let's say right there. That looks nice. Okay. Now you can relight the scene, the uh, landscape, like this, this mountain here in the front. You can relight that if you want. Um, or you can keep it the original color. So that's, it's very popular on, or very powerful, I'd say, in a lot of other photos. Um, for this one, I don't think um, we need to relight it much. I'll just keep that off. I think it looks nice already. Then you can go into the advanced settings of the sky replacement, flip the sky back and forth if you want to see what that looks like. Um, and then work if you think, you know, the gaps and the edge, you know, what it's done uh, with uh, selecting the mountain range and replacing that sky. If, there, if you see anything that needs fixed at all, you can work with the gaps and the local um, adjustments here. I think it looks fine. If I want to blur the, the sky, I can defocus it quickly um, right here if I want to you know, maybe set it apart um, from the foreground more. I kind of like it clear. So I'm done with that. Um, and now uh, I want to get into the two final things that I would do with this photo. I've already done the clone and stamp, already done the sky replacement. Those things, the clone and stamp took me about 20 or 30 seconds to go through those four areas. The sky took me about 30 seconds. And um, now I want to go in and um, I'm going to set a new layer now um, here. I'm going to work on an adjustment layer. And what I want to do is I want to fix the color and the highlights of this uh, photo. So I'm going to go into Essentials now and work in um, AI Enhance is uh, artificial intelligence uh, in the photo that Luminar uh, provides. I, I, I really like what it does uh, with, if you look at the details, um, I, I don't want to go, you know, too strong on it. Um, it might be too strong, but I like what it does, you know, in the mid-range. So I'll leave that. I don't want to enhance the sky. If I just want to enhance the sky, you can see what that does. Um, I don't want to enhance the sky with this photo. I like that. I do want to play with the color. And so here, um, there, you see there's a orange and red in the rocks, and there's blue in the sky. Um, and so I can go here and increase the vibrance, um, you know, a little bit to the whole photo if I want. Um, and then if I want to go down into advanced settings, here's orange, here's red, and here is blue over here. Um, so I would take the orange and maybe bump up the saturation a little bit on that, but play with the luminance of just that orange color to see what, what do I, how, how do I think the luminance works best uh, with the light and with the sky that I have in the photo now. I kind of like that, just cup, you know, add, add a few. Uh, red, um, 
I want to see. Uh, I like the red in the photo. I don't want to. I don't want it to be too strong, but I could play with um, the reds that are in the rock as well. And then blue is where I want to make. Uh, I think the most changes. I want to really increase um, the saturation of the sky, probably around 15, and play with that luminance to let it pop. Um, you know, maybe plus four, plus five. And there you can look and, and see um, you know, already the changes that have been made. If you want to preview this, um, you know, the changes that you've been made compared to the original when you first brought it into the software, uh, you can click the eyeball up here at the top and quickly look at the before photo and the after photo. Or you can click this before and after and do a slider here and compare. So you'll see these, these uh, cuts, this object up here, and then um, this uh, this hole right here, and then down here were the cuts, so you can see those, um, and then you can see the sky. You know what do you think? So AI enhance uh, the colors and the sky replacement, uh, and then one last thing I want to turn that off. When I look at this photo, um, I see that there are a lot of details in the whites over here on the left, but once it gets over in this area of the photo, the rock. Um, those details are lost. It's kind of more bland. Um, the white is kind of washed out. Um, and so I want to bring in uh, some of the details, and I'm going to do that with another adjustment layer um, here. So I'll add an adjustment layer, and I want to work on um, the contrast here. I want to go into the pro area. And this is a tool that I really like a lot in Luminar 4. I'm using it almost in every photo, and that's called Advanced Contrast. And I want to play with the highlights, the contrast in the highlights, because this is where over here there's some a lot of highlights. And I kind of want to bring those down and add some contrast to that. And then I can play with the balance. Do I want um, you know darker contrast or going back to the brighter contrast? Obviously, I want um, to go to darker. And I think that works great. Um, then you can also play around with midtones or shadows down here. Um, so shadows, I might be able to pop out um, some there as well. Now, I don't, you can see it's it's kind of made the whole photo look um, not so pleasing. So I just want to make this um, applicable to this area of, of the whites here on the right side and not the whole photo. Um, so I'm going to brush that and... Um, edit the mask of just this advanced contrast. You can see up here you can paint or erase. So I'm going to paint in um, just those this, these adjustments to this area right here. Um, so now you can see um, a lot of contrast coming into this area of the photo and that area is looking a lot better. And that's it. Um, I'm pretty happy with the photo. I just spent about three or four minutes actually editing the photo, you know, with my hands on the mouse and using the tools. Um, but I'm pretty happy uh, with what I was able to do with Luminar very quickly. And uh, I think you guys, you know, can see for yourself why this software is, is worth uh, picking up. And I'll be back with another tutorial to show you even how I edit other photos. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and press apply, um, send this photo back into Lightroom, you know, to keep it in my library there. But Luminar 4 is a standalone application. Um, you can, you don't have to use uh, Lightroom anymore. You can actually uh, keep all your photos in a library inside of um, Lightroom 4. You can see that up here. Um, but I am using the edit, um, uh, edit section of the software and editing the photo, and then I could keep it in my library in uh, Luminar, uh, which is something I, I, uh, might, I might do this year. I'm trying to move away um, from uh, Lightroom entirely, and Luminar, um, I know with editing right now, Luminar is, is much more easier and uh, simpler for me to use, and I get better results, um, and I might use it as a library in the, in the near future. So thank you guys for checking this out. Um, I'll go ahead and dump this uh, picture back into my portfolio and publish it online and uh, see what everybody thinks. But let me know if you have any questions. Um, thank you, Skylum, uh, for allowing me to use the software. And I'll be back with another tutorial in the future.